This video will demonstrate how to install warm core folding sliding doors correctly. We will show you two different installations, one four pane door with a 440 configuration and one six pane door which opens centrally. Before installing your warm core door, remove the old door, tidy up the aperture and protect the interior with a dust sheet. Make sure that you have measured the aperture before removing the old door and check that the new door will fit correctly. Check that the sill is level. Lay out DPC, replacing any old DPC that is damaged. Apply packers where needed on top of the DPC to level the sill. Lift the new door into place, sill first, and push the head in. For large doors, make sure you have enough people lifting the door to avoid damage or strain. Check that the door is plumb and level, applying packers where needed. Remove the beads from the sashes and place to one side. All the beads are numbered, so you will know the order for fixing them later. Before fixing the frame, you need to release the bogey wheels. These are located in the top and bottom on both the inside and outside of the doors. To release the springs, remove the grub screw on the side. Once released, the bogey wheels won't come out of the tracks. Open the door and support the weight of the open sashes to prevent the door from overbalancing. To fix the frame, start at the sides. Remove the infill gasket and measure out fixing points. Base and head fixings should be between 150mm and 200mm from the corners, with intermediate fixings not exceeding 600mm centres. Apply packers around the fixing area before fixing with a masonry drill bit and suitable fixing screws. Be careful not to over tighten the screws as this can distort the frame. On a door configuration where the sash is all open to one side, you will need to remove the latch plate before fixing the jam where the door closes. Check that there is no bowing in the jams once they have been fixed. You can fix the head in two ways. If you are using the same fixing method, you will need to countersink the screws to avoid them catching as the door opens and closes. Make sure you apply packers next to each fixing point and be careful not to over tighten the screws. Alternatively, you can remove the top track first. The top track is cut 400mm from the ends so it can easily be removed. You can then fix the screws directly into the channel before replacing the track. Fix the frame to the sill using a steel drill bit to drill the holes and countersink the top. Fix with appropriate screws. Measure the height all along the door frame to ensure it is consistently level. Warm core door installations always require mechanical fixings and should never solely be fixed with expanding foam. If you choose to use PU foam to fill the gaps between the frame and the aperture, be careful to avoid excessive use, as this can have a detrimental effect on the installation. Avoid any contact with powder coated surfaces. Clear the runner of any dirt and check that the door opens and closes smoothly. Along the length of the door, check the gaps at the head are the same size as the gaps between the sash and the sill. If the gaps are different sizes, you can fix this by adjusting the bogey wheels. This needs to be measured at the junction of every sash. To access the bogey wheel adjustment, 
you need to remove the top screw and plastic washer and take out the second washer. You can then use an Allen key to move the bogey wheels up and down. To toe and heel the door correctly, you should start at one end and work your way inwards. For a door with sashes that all open in one direction, like this 440 configuration, you will need to start on the second sash in. Pack the bottom corner by the bogey wheel to the diagonally opposite top corner with bridge packers as demonstrated. You may want to use a bead of silicon to hold these in place. If the door has a toe and healing device, ensure that you stick a packer to the device using the adhesive strip so the metal doesn't come into direct contact with the glass. For doors without a toe and healing device, apply a bridge packer in this corner instead. Apply another packer onto the bottom bridging packer before lifting the glass unit in. Once the glass unit is in place, pack the glass over the bridge packers with additional packers at hinge and lock points. Be careful not to overpack the sashes as this can cause swelling. If the door has a toe and healing device, you can tighten this as needed. Don't over tighten though, as this can cause damage to the glass unit. When applying the beads, check that you have the right beads for the right sash. These are clearly labelled with corresponding sash numbers. Fix the top bead first, followed by the bottom, then left, and finally right. You may find it easier to peel away the protective tape in the corners so it doesn't get stuck in the beads. When fixing the beads, ensure that you use the grey, softer side of the mallet to avoid any damage. When toe and healing the next sash, you will pack in the opposite direction. When you have finished glazing, check that the door slides open and closes smoothly. Use an Allen key to move the central escutcheon plate into the correct position. Tighten it to set in place. You can do the same for the top and bottom plates. Avoid setting them too tight as this will make the door difficult to open and close. In some door configurations, you'll need to add magnets to the sashes to protect the doors from the possibility of hitting each other. Mark and drill holes into the sashes and remove the protective tape to fix the magnets with appropriate fixing screws. You can now remove the remaining protective tape, cut the packers flush to the edge of the door frame, mask the door off and finish with a bead of silicon. If there is still work to be done on the interior of the house, we recommend leaving the protective tape on the inside until the interior has been finished. Clear the runner again and apply silicon spray to the top and bottom runners to help bed them in. Clean the glass inside and out and check the hinges and handles are all working correctly. Before you finish, make sure you demonstrate to the homeowner the correct way to open, close and lock the doors. And don't forget to hand over the keys. <laughs>